never a bad idea to make sure the water nipple's still working, although the puddle on the ground right below it indicates that it's probably fine. Twice a day, every day, I think, man, I need to get my new pig feeder done so I don't have to mess around with that old one anymore. So I think we will work on that this afternoon. But this morning, I need to go take care of the cow that I locked up in the last video. Just kind of check up on her and see how she's doing. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. I noticed in the last video, this body squeeze was very squeaky, so it, it's a little bit better now. Before I get too ahead of myself, I guess I better make sure that she stayed in this pen overnight. Sometimes you think everybody's settled and doing fine, and you come back in the morning and, you know, they had other plans during the night. Well, we're still here. We'll go get the gate set up and get her walking over towards the chute and kind of evaluate if she looks any better. I would kind of doubt it because we just doctored her for the first time yesterday, but that medicine, the reason that I'm doing this again today is because I actually read the label on the bottle of medicine and they said that you need to do daily applications for several days in a row for it to work properly. So that's why that's why we're doing this. I remember in the old days, me and grandpa going out in the field if we had a cow with hoof rot and uh, just getting as close as we could with that bottle and squirting it and trying to hit the hoof. So we're, the way I'm doing it now is, is a little bit better. We've, we've come a long way. The calf is gonna present a little bit of a challenge just because we, um, I don't wanna leave the calf in here by itself. It'll probably get a little nervous but I don't also want to bring it into the tub with her. So we'll try to split them up there somewhere and, you know, we'll make it work. Well, she knows right where to go. I guess I don't have to push her. Of course, as soon as I say that, she gets distracted by a little patch of Bermuda grass. So I'm gonna walk around and get behind her and just try to ease her on up in here. Stay. All right, you two. Let's move it up. Move it up. Move it up. Come on now. Come on now. Oh, don't start that now. Go forward. I know what you're thinking. Pushing a cow in this condition is always kind of uh, a give and take. You know, you don't want to make them go too fast or any faster than they're capable of, but you also don't want them to, uh, to get away with not cooperating either. Come on now. It's a, it's a slow process, isn't it? Okay, the trick here, getting the calf out, keeping the cow in, and see what we can do. Oh, 
Well, that didn't work. Take two. Now. Well, she being a bit of a pill, so the new plan, we're just gonna let her calf through the chute and back out into the holding corral here while we work on her. So we're kind of outsmarting them here a little bit. This is what becomes the problem when you're having to get a cow in multiple times uh, in, a, in a short time period. They kind of learn where they don't want to go if they don't want to end up in here. So they get a little bit tougher to deal with every time you go to catch them. Well, to me, things look a little bit worse today um her hoof definitely looks a lot more swollen and yeah her walking definitely has not improved any i would like to get a look at the bottom of her foot again to see if anything looks different Tell you the truth, things actually look a little bit worse today. I feel like the swelling has gone up a little bit. And when I was looking under her hoof, I thought I could see um, a little like cut or abrasion, something that would be totally consistent with just average everyday hoof rot. So that is how I'm gonna treat this from here on out, which means I will give her a round of antibiotics today. Every time I give a shot of antibiotics on camera somebody leaves a comment you know a smart alecky comment like oh no wonder there's so much antibiotics in our food and to those people because i know you're watching i just want to point out this is a breeding cow she won't be intended for human consumption for many more years she's still a young cow so she won't be entering the food supply anytime soon and aside from that what do you want me to do? You want me to just let her sit here and suffer? If this is what we've got to do to get them better, then this is what we'll do. Good spot here. Well, that's the best you've held still for me all day. Now shut this gate. Watch your head, watch your head. Open this gate. Sorry, I forgot the body speed. Didn't slow you down though, did it?
That cap's got flies real bad. I wanna see if I can spray him down before I turn him back out. Still a couple buzzing around, but heck of a lot better than he was. There's a little bit of grass here behind the building that they both seem to be enjoying. So I think I'm just going to close this gate and give them continued access to this area. Just, you know, because they seem to like it. Boy, this gate has sagged. With that round of antibiotics, I won't have to mess with her tomorrow. In fact, I probably won't have to give her any treatment again after that. From here on out, it's just rest and recovery, and, and hopefully she can kind of stay off that foot as much as possible, being locked up in the little corral. And, you know, I'm hoping in, within a week, she'll probably be walking pretty good again. We'll see. One part of having a scale that's ended up being really nice that I never really even thought about when I got it is when you're giving any sort of antibiotics or vaccines or anything that's based on their weight, you can get an accurate weight to base your dosage off of. Obviously, I did not weigh her in this video, but if you missed the last video, I weighed her then, which was yesterday as I'm filming this, and I figured her weight's probably not gonna change that much overnight. I grabbed the face flips for this back rubber here for the main cow herd as well because I've noticed like with the cow sprayer it's really good at getting rid of the body flies but unless I set that thing up to spray them right in the face it's not going to do anything for face flies and I just feel like if you make it where it sprays them right in the face they're just not going to like going through that thing you might get stuff in their eyes it just doesn't seem good this seems like a better way to deal with the face flies and as I get these things set up on the back rubber it kind of dawned on me that a windy day Probably not the best day to do this because now they're flapping around and might cause the cows a little bit more uncertainty than they would if they were just hanging there not moving around. But I don't know. They, you know, they're going to want to get through that gate. So they'll, they'll muster up the courage one way or another. Back in the shop and for the next several hours at least, I'm going to be working on the pig feeder. Today my hope is to get some of the structure done in the feed pan itself. I've got to build a little frame in there so that I can attach lids to keep both rodents and hopefully water out of this thing. But before I get it flipped over, I want to weld this seam on the bottom of the pan. If you guys remember, I didn't have a big enough piece of sheet metal to just use one piece on the bottom, so I butted two together. And this seam is impossible pretty much to weld from the top. So we'll do this one from the bottom and then we can flip it over. So now that I'm thinking about it, um, you know, I may as well just finish welding all the seams on the pan itself, but these corner ones, I want to weld from the other side. So I'm just going to lay this thing down and then we'll do like a downhill vertical weld. Uh, those are, those are nice with sheet metal. You can move pretty fast and, and it ends up, you know, burning in there pretty good. Once I add the rest of the structure for like the lids and everything, it's gonna probably be a lot harder to access those joints. So we'll do it now. This thing's getting heavy. Getting heavy. I'm gonna start moving it with the hoist here for too long. It's tricky because I just welded it so I can't actually touch the pan. It's very hot still, but we'll figure it out. I'm making more out of it than it needs to be. Just don't smash your finger.
The thing that I do not like about finished welding is you're in there, you're on your hands and knees, you're working for possibly hours getting everything done, and then when you step back to look at your hard work, it pretty much looks exactly the way that it did when you started. I decided on this next part, I really don't want to do all this on my knees on the ground, so I'm going to try to figure out a way to pick this thing up and set it on a, uh, a barrel or something. Well, it is definitely a little wobbly, but I'm, I'm leaving the hoist connected to it. So the, the barrel is more just to kind of give it something to rest on. But I don't think there's any way that this can fall uh, as long as I leave everything hooked up like it is. And it's going to be so much nicer to work on all this at waist level instead of on my hands and knees on the ground. So what do you do if you don't have one inch flat bar? You make some one inch flat bar. So we want this piece of one inch flat bar that I just made to cut off on this angle so that it, it mates right up to the hopper cone here. And then it'll be on the same plane as the piece of angle iron that I just tacked on down here. We'll do the same thing on the other side and then that creates this big flat surface here and then that's what we can attach the lids to, in theory. So right now, I'm just doing this to find the angle that I need to cut this at. So whatever that is, should be right. Pretty much what I was thinking. Comparing what the pig feeder looks like now to what it looked like when we started several hours ago, it doesn't really look like I got that much done on this, but what I lack in actual production output, I think I made up for with uh, just figuring out a lot of things about how I'm gonna move forward as I finish building this. A lot of the stuff I wasn't exactly sure how it was gonna go. It's one of those things that you don't really know until you start burning metal together and, and then you kind of start to see what you need to do, what's gonna work, what's not gonna work and I'll, I'll try to explain to you guys what I was able to figure out because a lot of my time spent in the shop today was just me doing this, staring at the pig feeder, trying to figure out the best way to do things. I knew I had to get something on the edge of the trough here to soften it so when the pigs are reaching in, they're not like scratching or like cutting their throats, you know, that would not be good. So with the piece of angle iron here, once this is fully welded and I can smooth it out with the grinder, this will accomplish that. And it also gives us a good face to weld everything else that's gonna 
kind of hold the lids on there. So like this piece of flat bar and this piece of flat bar have to be flat with each other so that when your door closes, it's somewhat sealed. Now what I'll end up doing once I get all the frame done here is I'm gonna get some little tiny, I've seen it before, like half inch angle iron and just run it, you know, with a leg up all the way around and then that'll give our doors something to seal onto or, or kind of like flashing, I guess is how you should think of it. And what about these corners down here? Not only are they ugly, but I think they pose a safety hazard for the pigs as well. So what I'm gonna end up doing here to get rid of this sharp corner here, you gotta think, you know, if a pig has his jaw in here chewing and another one pushes him into the corner here, that's not gonna feel too good. So what I'm planning to do is put some little triangles down here and you know we'll clean this up and make it fit better but that'll eliminate that corner and then we'll just have to come through with the grinder and soften these edges plus we'll have that angle iron lip that will eliminate the sharp edge as well so what i'm saying is i may not have gotten a lot actually done on the feeder but i got a lot of things figured out so the next time i come and work on this i don't have to sit here and figure out what i'm gonna do how i'm gonna do it i've already got that part figured out next time i'll just be able to go straight to work pasture move day uh, i gotta yeah this this is the wire i want to unhook and yes, I could just turn the box off, but what I, I like just unhooking the wire if I can, because then when I put them in the new part of the pasture, the, the wire is still hot. The one that's keeping them out of going into the next one is still hot, I should say, and that's, that's the important one. Wake up, everybody. It's time. You guys aren't very hungry, huh? It looks like these two are just laying here in the shade, chewing their cud, and that's exactly what I need her to do. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.